for example, the other day I had to make a Django command to do some cron job typey thing for CMS that you requested for me. And <laughs> I basically start to pair program with, with the thing, you know, and uh, you say, can you write a Django command to parse a CSV? So you get some boilerplate code. You grab that code, which often works already out of the box, um, and you just adapt it to your needs. Hello and welcome to the PyBytes podcast, where we talk about Python, career, and mindset. We're your hosts. I'm Julian Sequeira. And I am Bob Beldebos. If you're looking to improve your Python, your career, and learn the mindset for success, this is the podcast for you. Let's get started. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the PyBytes podcast. This is Bob Elbos. I'm in here with Julian. How's it going, man? Yeah, it's great. A lot of exciting stuff happening. Um, how are you? I'm good. I'm I'm finally reunited with you after what feels like two weeks, three weeks. It's yeah. been a while, man. Yeah, it seems uh, like we only get to catch up on the podcast. Sadly enough. <laughs> It's a way to keep keep uh, in touch. So you're all just listening to yeah. our um, hangout sessions. Um, but you've uh, we'll, we'll kick it off. We're going to keep this pretty quick, um, not because we're strapped for time or anything like that, uh, but because we want to keep this punchy for all of you listening, of course, as always. Uh, so, Bob, talk to me. What What's your win? What's something you've been up to lately that you're proud of, excited about, something like that? Mm, well, I took a little break. Uh, without mm. PyBytes falling over. So thank you for covering. You're welcome. And the coaches, um, especially <laughs> Code Clinic as well. Yeah. Um, no, I think um, the win is adopting new tools. I and mean, I think we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. But uh, mm. definitely getting some productivity gains by adopting AI tools. Mm. Love it. Yeah. Excellent. What, a, what about you? Uh, for me, win-wise, uh, not too much. I haven't been winning lately. No, I'm kidding. Uh, lots of wins with the kids. You know, they're home on school holidays, so there's some special things there, but I'll go into that another time. Uh, one thing I'm very excited about is I've just been a little more – I've taken a scalpel to my schedule, especially in the evenings, right, with um, what I get up to with pie bites, and that means cutting you out of my life in the evenings, which sucks, but, you know, it's necessary to get some stuff done sometimes. And, um, yeah, I've been able to start working on our print book. So for all of you listening, we have the PyBytes tips book that you all know about, hopefully. Uh, two, 250 tips. Yep. Yeah. 250. I should know this. 250 tips, uh, Python tips, development tips. And um, we've our dream was to get it into a physical print book so we could hold it in our hands. And I've started work on that. So uh, very excited. We should, um, I have no idea how long the process takes. I've no, so I can't promise a deadline, but I'm very excited to have signed up with some publishing and have the templates and have started the work of copying it across so that it can physically be printed, which is very exciting. That's amazing. Super exciting. Yeah. To have yeah. a stack of copies. Mm. On the bookshelf there. Uh, we just throw everything off the bookshelves <laughs> and just fill them with our book. <laughs> yeah. and I think as well, it'll also be a nice opportunity to add some more tips, uh, revise mm. a few, uh, although most of it is still timeless and uh, people go back to it over and over again. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to re rewrite the foreword and all that stuff to uh, mm. reflect on what we've seen from the past almost three years since we published that book, man. Whew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, and on that note, actually, with the tips kind of related as well as our new uh, passion for YouTube. Like we're mm. keeping the videos up, are we not? Like three or, well, the aim is five. Sometimes we get three in, but almost daily videos on work days, mm. um, mostly around Python. And um, people love them. I have a nice flow now of doing that every day. They're short, two to five minutes. Well, <laughs> Average, say, <laughs> five to eight minutes, I guess, uh, but still pretty short. And yeah. Um, yeah, we leave the mistakes in. So um, it's good learning. That's actually the best part because uh, even the one that you recorded today, as I, as I was watching it um, before we published it, <laughs> I saw the extra line of code and I was like, what is that? And then you're like, oh, I think that's from the next in there. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. 
cool. Yeah. So yeah, it was, yeah, it's yeah. nice to see those anomalies, right? The things that you kind of forget are going to happen and they can catch you off guard. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's where the real, um, I mean, we do edit and we polish them up, you know, coughs and stuff and, and slip ups. But when it comes to coding unexpected things, yeah, it's super valuable to leave those in. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike this podcast where you just get all the, <laughs> Where we just wing it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the mess. Get all the we mess. don't even have an agenda for today. Yeah, what were we going to talk about? Uh, look, mm-hmm. honestly, I would be happy to just sit here and record us talking about your trip and the things that you did and learnt and and all that stuff. And maybe, you know, let us know if you're, if you're listening to this. Um, you know, Bob and I want to do like an Ask Me Anything type session, an AMA uh, coming up and it was actually uh, recommended by a couple of people in our at first annual pie bite survey for that we ran uh, doing this those. month yeah yeah and uh, we got a lot of valuable insights which we'll actually share in another podcast episode coming mm. up uh but the one of the tips was hey we'd love to see you do an ama ask me anything super casual so if you're interested in that let us know we'd uh, love to kick one of those off we've never done one yeah, kind pretty of. easy to do with all the tooling out there. You just need to uh, organize it. Yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. thanks everybody that filled out that survey. We're going to do that every year and uh, amazing feedback. And I think we will dedicate another episode to dive in some trends and stuff, right? And yeah. plans we have moving forward. So yeah. And congrats to the three winners that got the t shirts. That's yeah. pretty cool. Already be emailed. Just- yeah. Yeah, we've got to send those out. So, uh, all right. So we've got, I reckon I give us about seven minutes to talk about this. Uh, sure. Keep this Let's keep punchy. it short. We can always have follow-ups, which I think yeah, will, then we uh, can, will be needed. Yeah. We still need to share what we're reading at the end too. So mm. we want to talk quickly about chat GPT and its place in coding. So obviously this is a really meaty topic, but specifically we wanted to talk about uh, your experience, Bob, with using it. So I'm kind of interviewing you here. So, um, how are you currently using it in your day-to-day workflow, if at all? Yeah, I was kind of a late adopter relatively. Like I was just procrastinating a bit on it um, till a few weeks ago and I started playing with it. I saw our coach- coaches use <laughs> it uh, quite enthusiastically. Uh, I need to jump on this, right? And yeah, I fully embrace it now because um, yeah, you can use it for any, almost any um coding task and of course disclaimer right uh, be very careful what you put in a tool you're not not sure where that info goes so use it with public data or or just generic code concepts right don't don't start to pour internal code in that tool don't don't do that mm. <laughs> yeah. but i don't know it's uh, i have to think of an example because I, I use it now every day and for example the other day i had to make a django command to do some cron job typey thing for cms that you requested for me and <laughs> I basically start to pair program with, with the thing, you know, and uh, you say, can you write a Django command to parse a CSV? So you get some boilerplate code. You grab that code, which often works already out of the box, um, and you just adapt it to your needs. And sometimes it will mm-hmm. throw an error, right? It kind of always take into account edge cases. Uh, but it's, it's really mind-blowing how well it understands English, how well it builds upon previous conversation. And that's mm. where I think it trumps um, search engines, engines, search engines that you don't always have that state, right? So this is fully aware of all the stuff that it has said. So it's really like a chat, a conversation. Uh, so on. sometimes but errors happen. Before you, and, mm. I'm going to interrupt you there. Sorry, just for clarity for for me and for everyone else listening, when you say it maintains that state, you're talking about in the specific chat. Because if you, everyone who's used chat GPT, you have that left menu that has all your previous chat histories, right? So mm-hmm. you have one of those for coding and that mm-hmm. specific one maintains that, that yeah. memory, right? Yeah, okay, well, so- I, I have one per task I'm doing basically. Yeah, sometimes okay. I mix them up, but I try to make a new chat per per topic. And then okay, gotcha. state in the sense that you can just refer back to in a snippet like 20... <laughs> conversations back you Hmm. said um this and that and it it will know right so um understood but when you create a whole new chat flow all that state is gone in the new chat flow right i think so yeah i've not really said that right yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. i just wanted to clarify that okay yeah all right continue so yeah great for scaffolding boilerplate um when you get errors you can paste in the errors and it understands um 
where the bug might lie and it then will rewrite the program for example today i added a bit of exception handling because i got an index mm. error uh today for example i used this well to scrape a website <laughs> and you know it's code i can write right and uh but i can definitely see how it would take me longer um just to mm. you know look things up um one piece by piece and here you get like the whole code in one go uh but yeah as we've discussed right you kind of a you need to know what questions to ask b mm -hmm. also need to understand what it gives back and where potential bugs and and issues might lie and you have to have that that yeah back and forth prompt engineering uh mindset yeah. which i'm still learning right it's brand new and i think it's it's a really good skill to look into yeah but looking at the history right of that chat and looking at the way that you speak with it and this is something that i think everyone's just going to have to get used to is that mm. when you first start using it it's very input output right it's very black and white so to speak so you'll ask it a question like um oh i don't know what's the best way to accomplish x y and z or um give me five tips on how best to learn python you know i don't know right it's it's a very it's like a google search but as you uh, graduate past that stage and start to get into this flow that you're talking about and i look through your conversation history with it it's it's almost like you're on slack chatting with a, a teammate overseas and going actually that snippet you gave me that's actually going to produce the wrong output can you just go back and uh change it so that this value will be that or to accommodate that there are going to be colons here in the the text input and so on and so forth and it's it's really cool that you can write so casually to it mm. and it understands that and then says oh sorry I, I imagine it has a british accent um and then if it was to speak <laughs> and it comes back and says oh sorry bob dear chap let me here's a better uh, code snippet for you and then you just go oh great thanks so I think that's that's amazing. I'm very impressed. Very impressed yeah, that's it. really amazing. Uh, another example, yesterday I used it to quickly set up talks uh, on PyBytes Search open source project. So there was an issue open like, uh, hey, 3.11 is a bit restrictive to only support that. Can you also um, support 3.9, 3.10? And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, mm. So yeah, then the knowledge comes in like, hey, I'm going to support various Python versions mm, instead of just changing that in your TOML file and hope for the best. No, you probably mm. want to verify that, right? So it was already my knowledge that I know, okay, you can use Tux then to test various versions. So you already come to the tool with that knowledge and then you can mm. very laser focused ask like, hey, how do I set, a, set up Tux in a Python project? And I got the minimal um, Tux.ini config file. Um, and then you start to work with it, test it. Then of course I had to write some tests but, you know, I was kind of lazy to do that from scratch. So you can ask <laughs> like, hey, here's my module. Here's my class. Can you write tests for it? Um, and it used the request library. So again, come coming in knowledge like, well, if I let it do its thing, then it's going to, you know, not mock anything out. And you have a network mm. call happening. So I already in my query said like, can you write the test for this class using mocking, right? And it just understands that, right? So you get very specific specifically the code you want and then of course i had to iterate clean it up a bit and there were some commands i thought were a bit superfluous so i removed the commands i of course as it was giving me different codes in isolation there was some duplication happening so i made some pictures so there's still some work to do and later in code review they also said like yeah it can be drier and yeah you can use <laughs> parameterize and all that yeah. um, but i was just happy with that yeah, edited revision for a first go. And, but yeah, like the tox configuration, uh, the whole test suite, it, it saved me like so much time. Yeah. Mm. That's incredible. I, I just, and I think you, you raise a really good point here. And this is the, I just want to wrap it up with this comment, right? Is mm. that we'll be talking more about this, I think. Yeah. We'll talk about this another time. You're just getting the quick coffee chat cuts here, but, um, uh, tip of the iceberg. A tip of the iceberg. I think the big thing here is that there are a lot of people that are fearful. There's a lot of fear mongering as well, saying that this is going to take over developer jobs. This is going to take over your job. You're going to be obsolete. And as John Oliver put it on last week tonight, one of my favorite shows, um, it's not, it's, 
the thing that's going to become obsolete, and I, I like this premise, and I, you know, people can argue with me, and that's fine, uh, is that it's going to be the jobs that don't utilize it and learn to partner with the AI service that are going to become obsolete. And it's going to be the people that learn to work with it in harmony, such as what you're talking about, Bob, that excel and they're the ones that become successful. Because at the end of the day, as you've very well put, you have to know what the hell you're talking about to get this kind of value out of it. You can't just say, write me a class and be done with it because you have to understand what it's spat out and whether that's actually going to suit your need, how you can customize it, uh, whether it's going to do exactly what you need it to do without causing issues uh, and that it can catch all those exceptions and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, lots more to dive into when we get a chance, but uh, I think this was, this is really cool to hear how you use it from time to time. Yeah. Time to time, all, almost every day now. <laughs> when I said time to time, I mean like hour to hour every day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 awesome. Yeah, and I think we nice. can definitely have some more detailed discussions about this, yeah. even look at some code examples. But I think this will do for an initial exploration. And yeah, we, as always, we're happy to hear your experiences. If you use it, not use it, how you use it, where you see yeah. concerns. Um, yeah, we're, we're just, as everybody, we're just learning the new tool set and recognizing that it's going to be important and the mm. industry is changing, right? So um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So just quick before we drop, what are you reading? Yeah, mostly uh, fiction, actually. You got me on the fiction uh, bandwagon. Excellent. Ex uh, <laughs> it's really another type of reading, really relaxing. And yeah, you kind of, the whole character development, psychology, I, I really like that. But yeah, to, to keep it AI, I think uh, there's a new book by Martin Ford, uh, which writes a lot about artificial intelligence and it's called Rule of the Robots how artificial intelligence will transform everything. So I'm not that far into it because of the fiction. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is not science fiction anymore, it seems. <laughs> <Not exactly. laughs> so I'm I'm reading that and I'm, I just want to, um, yeah, know what a specialist, AI specialist thinks of it. And um, yeah, I think it's, That's cool. we should all be reading about AI these days, uh, especially in Agreed. IT, I think. Yep, yeah, 100%. Nice. What about you? Okay. Well, um, well, yeah, I'm still reading my fiction, the uh, quartet, uh, Wizard of Earth. See, I'm on book three. Almost finished that, I think. Um, but I, I've actually, you know, aside from audio books that I'm going through, um, I've picked up my iPad and have been going through my magazine subscription that I have through that uh, with the family. And so I've been reading like some entrepreneur magazines, um, I've picked up my Harvard Business Review again. Just, I, I kind of like this cycle that I kind of go through. Of some days, or some a month for a month, I'll be really into like those career help books, mindset books, and then another time I'll be into very tactical stuff. Other times, fiction, and so I'm in that sort of cycle. And just before we go, um, one thing I did want to share with everyone that I want everyone listening to this to check out because if you are in a job in a company right now, you're going to find this very relevant to you. Um, check out the, so we had Cassandra Babilia on the podcast uh, a couple of weeks back, maybe two months ago. And she runs a blog called the Make Work Suck Less blog or newsletter. Um, and I've actually been reading that because her posts are very much written like, you know, they're long form and, and so on. But especially right now with the workplace and the IT industry, especially being very, chaotic a lot of what she writes about is very relevant so i wanted to make a shout out to that because it makes a huge difference even if some might be managed uh, focused on managers i think it's really important for employees to read that so you know what you can expect from your managers or what you should expect so that's something i've actually been diving into in my reading time instead of reading my magazines and stuff so feels like i'm reading a hbr article or something anyway so there you go nice yeah, and another nice. book I'm picking up. Physically picking up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was a Who bad Moved joking. My Cheese? That's kind of a classic. I think it's from 98. What? By Kenneth uh, Spencer Johnson. I've never An amazing way to deal with change in your work and in your life. And yeah, it's 
I'm not sure, <laughs> I mean, what was going on in the 90s, but maybe it was the animation overall. And, you know, it's a book that you have to accept. It's more like a mindset book, right? Like accepting mm. change. And I think that's kind of a good reread these days with the okay. swift changes in the industry now with AI. So that's another one I'm I'm definitely going to read again. Very nice. Mm. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. So got to add that to the list. There you go. Yeah. All right. I think that's nice. it. Please reach out to us uh, for preferred topics, feedback, ideas. Check out our YouTube as well. Putting a lot of Python out there. And join our Slack as well. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. And we want to hear from you as always. So just you know, shoot us through an email, send us a message and give us some feedback. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'll be back next week. So thank you all think for listening. think accountability wise, maybe what? next week we do the survey episode. If you want. Okay. All right. We'll do that. That means I got to collate all that data. Oh, I'm tired already thinking about it. All right. Fine. Uh, and next week we'll run through it and talk, and we'll actually tell you all about the changes we're going to make in response to that data. So, yeah. That's all right. Cool. Thanks, man. You take care. Enjoy. And um, thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. We'll be back next week. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. See ya. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode. To hear more from us, go to pybyte slash friends. That is pybit.es slash friends and receive a free gift just for being a friend of the show. And to join our thriving Slack community of Python programmers, go to pybyte slash community. That's pybit.es forward slash community. We hope to see you there and catch you in the next episode.